Hello, this is Paul with the Logics Magazine. We're going to talk today about how to become a six-figure PLC programmer. We're going to get started right now. So, I'm going to share seven very specific and really important steps that you absolutely have to take to get a six-figure income as a PLC programmer. Now, what's most important is this can be done in your first or and or second or third job opportunity, okay? You don't have to wait until you got 10 years in to be able to earn six figures. And we're going to talk about that today. But there are seven things that you need to focus on. That's what we're going to get into. So the first is you got to have a bulletproof confidence, strong confidence in yourself and your ability to do the job. Period. That, that's got to be key and number one. So let me share it with you how. Let me give you some help to get to that point anyhow, right? Okay, a website called roberthalf.com says that only 42% of all job applicants are fully qualified for the job that they're applying for. 42%, that's it. That means over half of them aren't fully qualified. So you're in a lot of you're with a lot of people who may not be fully qualified to a job that you apply for. A lot of people doing it. <clears throat> and interestingly, 84% of all employers say that they're willing to train the right candidate who doesn't have all the qualifications. The odds are in your favor if you have the confidence and, the, and, and at least a competent skill set level to go after the job. You got to be willing to put yourself out there, right? Go to the interview, do the best that you can before the interview, prepare for the interview, go and land that job. But you got to have that confidence that you can do the job, all right? Okay, so that's number one. It is confidence. Now, how do you build that confidence, right? We're going to start with, you're going to build a project's portfolio. I talk about this in all my videos, almost all of them, and I'm telling you, it's the most powerful tool that you'll have more powerful than your resume it is a crucial tool right you know build this pro this project's portfolio filled with a lot of good high level programs hmi plc's uh safety program whatever types of different programs put it in there and and be able to speak to that in great detail be prepared to be questioned be prepared to be tested on this be highly competent. Don't just do a copy and paste because they're going to catch you. I guarantee you. <clears throat> All right. So go slow. Take your time. Think it through. Build a project's portfolio and, and take it to a high level. Make it distinctively yours. Right. <clears throat> All right. So I'd say the third one is this is an often overlooked one. And this is crucial. Crucial. You gotta do good research on the company that you're applying to. Now, a lot of you are gonna put together a resume, you're gonna shoot it out on Monster and Indeed, and you're gonna just spread it out to any company that's out there. And, and, and the fallacy of that is that what you're looking for is a, is a opportunity. <clears throat> what I suggest is that you find a good fit. Because that's going to be what makes the difference between you being successful and you failing as a company that's a good fit. Who knows where you're at? Who's willing to help develop you? That's a good fit for you and your lifestyle. Very important. Maybe you don't want to travel. Okay. So don't get out. Don't put yourself out there for a job when you know it's going to cause you an issue at home. Okay. It's not just a POC programmer's job. It's a good fit. And, and to, to further emphasize this, if it's not a good fit, it don't matter how much money they pay you, right? It's got to be a good fit. It's got to be a, a, to include a nice salary. That's important. So you're going to research this job opportunity before you apply. Look at the company and get in the details of the, the um, job description as you find one, right? <clears throat> okay. Now, the fourth one is it, probably one of the most crucial steps to take. And that's, you got to have a good interview. This is your time to shine. This is your time to put yourself out there, introduce yourself to the world, 
and show them what you're capable of and who you are. This is a time where you can go out there and I'm ready to be questioned. I'm ready to be tested. I'm ready to put myself out there and share my, my personality, my character, and my drive with a prospective employer. And if you've built the confidence, you have built the project's portfolio, it's a sound one, you've researched the company, and you're clear about uh, that you believe this is going to be a good fit for you, then I guarantee you with, with odds in your favor, you're going to have a good interview. If you fail any of those, you're going to go there. You're going to be afraid of being exposed for what you don't know. You're not going to be able to answer questions. You're not going to have a, be able to showcase your skill set. Bad. You're most certainly not ready for a six-figure job opportunity. That's just where, it's, where it lies, right? Okay. The fifth one is you got to be willing to ask for six figures. So let me, let me share with you <clears throat> how to do this. And it's very important. I'm going to share with you exactly how to get that six figures. There's a couple different ways. One <clears throat> is the big one. I would like, if they ask you what your salary comes down to that point and you reveal your number, I'm looking for a $100,000 a year job plus benefits. You see what I did there? I paused after it. I need to wait to hear what their response is. <clears throat> There's a reason for this. If you ask for it, then you start trying to justify it and you start talking. That's a very weak position to be in when negotiating. <clears throat> I'm worth it. I know it. I've demonstrated it. This is what it costs. And shut to, I'm, I'm asking for $100,000. And then stop and listen to what they say. Okay? They may feel they're getting a hell of a deal. But it won't work that way if you're busy chattering. Da, 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 da. Tell them I'm, uh, I'm asking for six figures. Whatever that number works out for you. And then be quiet and listen to their response. They really only have two, generally two responses. Oh, wow, that's that's not a number we're thinking about. Okay, great. We'll talk about that in a minute. You might be surprised when they say, yep, that's right in the range that we're thinking about. But if you don't listen, you'll never know which way they want to go, right? So it's very important to be strong enough and bold enough to put that number out there. How do you get good at that? Practice. <clears throat> Look in the mirror. Talk to your friends when you're practicing your interviews. Talk to them about it, right? Uh, um, um, uh, practice telling that, not saying that number out loud and getting confident and comfortable with asking for that amount of money. I think that makes sense. All right, so now let's say that they say, well, that's not a number we're thinking of. That's much too high. All right, so I'm going to look at some math I have written down here. So for instance, to earn a high five, six for your income, <clears throat> you need to be able to ask for at least 36 dollars an hour, right? Um, with time and a half for overtime. At about five to seven hours a week in, in overtime, right? What that's going to get you is a nice high five, six figure income, all right? At minimum, you need to be in that range. And if you feel that you're way, way, that's way too high a number, then you have some work to do, all right? <clears throat> okay. Now, Let's say, just by chance, step six, let's say that um, uh, you, you're you doing your search uh, and on, on the opportunities and that are, you know, borderline opportunities that are borderline good, right? That's not quite good enough. Not quite at that. Maybe, maybe the salary is not quite a six figure maybe it's a high five mid five high five somewhere in there you can still end up with overall a high five six figure compensation package and that's important sometimes it's not the dollar amount but it's the benefits in the pack the overall package that goes with that uh, that uh, job opportunity that you need to consider very important <clears throat> um it's important that, that, that all of the benefits and all the packages look 
looked at by you. Do not just go off of, well, this is what we're paying hourly, and just assume that the whole rest of the package is, is good. It may not be. You have to consider training. You have to consider travel. You have to consider um, uh, benefits and perks inside the company for 1K retirements, training reimbursement. There's a whole lot of factors that go into play here. Um, <clears throat> but um, if they are not, if, if you're asking for a dollar amount and they're not really, <clears throat> they're not really coming forth to helping you build that package up, and you kind of feel it could be a good fit. Remember, discussions and interviews, it's all a negotiation when it comes to salary and compensation in particular. It is a negotiation. Don't, you need to be able to push back gently a little bit and say, look, uh, you know, I'm, I'm looking for a little bit more. And, and, and here's a phrase that you could use, right? So, hey, your company is awesome. I would consider it out of this world to work with you all. It would mean uh, so much to me to join your team. But I think we need to adjust the offer just a little bit. And here's how. And then have a couple of ideas that you have thought about, prepared for, that could make that, bring that up, that offer up to a higher level. You might be surprised what they'd be willing to do. Because sometimes companies have, have hardline restrictions <clears throat> on pay and salary benefits. You just got to figure out where they have some flexible room, all right? Now, this could be a whole video all by itself, but don't be afraid to, to gently push back and ask for a little bit more. <clears throat> and, and the phrase I use all the time is, um, well, hey, your company's awesome. I would think it, you know, out of this world to be able to work and join your team. It really mean a lot to me to be able to work with your company and your team. <clears throat> But I think we need to adjust the offer a little bit, and here's how. And then share a couple of ideas with them. Very important to have a predetermined script to help get it, squeeze a little bit more out of that opportunity, all right? Finally, number seven. In order to get something, you've got to be able to, and be willing to walk away from things that aren't a good fit, that are not good. <clears throat> Sometimes you got to save yourself for that really good opportunity, right? That really good job opportunity that you're, that you're looking for, that you know is out there. Now, there's nothing wrong with doing lots of different interviews. If for no other reason to get practice interviewing. So you gotta get good with saying no. I cannot overemphasize how important that is. You gotta get good at saying no. <clears throat> and it's gonna be hard at first. Um, but it takes an adult and a professional to be able to say it's not a good fit. <clears throat> um, you know, by all means, let them know it's a great opportunity. I would love to work for your company. I just don't feel at this point it's a good fit. You know, keep me in mind if other opportunities arise. And I'd love to consider your company working with it. It's a fantastic company. And anybody who works here would consider themselves very lucky. And that is a very gentle no, right? <clears throat> now, you might be surprised. Maybe they'll come back and say, you know what? Maybe we could do something uh, to make it a better opportunity for you. Or they may ask you what your, what your reasons or your hesitancy for taking the opportunity is. Share them with them. Remember, it's a negotiation. And in every negotiation... You gotta... The way you're gonna stay strong and the way you're gonna be able to, to maybe... Push a little bit of, to drive uh, the end result of what you want is you got to be willing to say, if it ain't a good fit, I'm not doing it. If it's not going to fit what I think and what I want, I'm not going to do it. And that makes you a very shrewd negotiator. And part of this, especially being new, is being able to have the confidence and the competence to go out there and and find and land that opportunity, <clears throat> that opportunity, which does require a confident and competent negotiation skill. All right. So <clears throat> in summary, um, don't be afraid to ask for it, my friends. All right. So this is Paul with 
Logix Magazine. I apologize for my voice. It's still a little, a little flaky. But um, if you have any questions, put them down below. I'll answer them. Um, if you're first time here, subscribe. If you like what you're hearing, hit the bell and uh, you'll get more great videos. All right. Uh, regularly. We do a couple every week. So until next time, uh, keep building that projects portfolio. Talk to you guys later. Bye.